right, welcome everybody. Thank you for your patience uh, in the waiting room as we work through a few technical challenges in preparation for the meeting tonight. Um, we're going to start off with an important instruction to make sure everyone can fully engage in the meeting. Um, and so I'm going to show on my screen, uh, these are instructions in English, in Spanish, and in Amharic. For everyone to please click on the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen, on your, uh, on your Zoom screen. It's a little globe. You see the arrow pointing to it there. Just click on that button and select the language that you want to hear for tonight's meeting. You have the option of English, the option of Spanish, and you have Amharic. We do have translators tonight. Uh, so if you um, are listening to uh, Spanish, you'll hear the Spanish translator, Amharic, the, the Amharic translator. Um, I'll pause to see if, um, do we wanna give those instructions? I think we're good. I think everyone can see the instructions there. So we'll give everyone just a moment to select your interpretation. If you have any issues, um, you can chat in or just speak up now. We have a small enough group where we can probably problem solve individually. Is everyone able to select their interpretation? We also are joined by American Sign Language interpreters tonight. Thank you, Roz. We are. Um, so it, uh, we have two different interpreters who will be switching off throughout the presentation tonight as well. Um, I want to also mention that we do have translated PowerPoint decks. Um, there is a Spanish version and an Amharic version. Um, those will be chatted in shortly uh, by Donna from the city, city of Tacoma Park. You can click on the link and follow along on a translated version of the PowerPoint deck that we'll be working from tonight. Um, lastly, I wanna mention that this meeting is being recorded and the meeting will be posted and shared on the City of Tacoma Park redistricting website. Um, that includes the question and answer session and our discussion tonight. So I wanted to just disclose that as we're starting off. All right. A couple other instructions for engaging. I'm sure everyone has been in Zooms um, over the last year and a half, but it's always helpful to, as a reminder. Um, for participation tonight, we ask uh, for our discussion and for our question and answer, if you'll use the raise hand function, you might actually see it at the bottom of your Zoom screen. It just says raise hand. If you click on that, a little hand will pop up on your Zoom screen and we'll be able to call on you um, just as we would if we were in person and you were raising your hand. Um, the second instruction, um, you, you can also chat in um, any questions, any uh, contributions that you want to make for the discussion using the chat function. We'll be monitoring the chat as well throughout the evening. So those are the logistical instructions for, uh, for tonight. Um, I'm just kidding. There's one more, actually. So if you haven't already, we would love for you to please update your Zoom name, um, if you haven't already, you can do that by hovering over your video in the Zoom box. There's three little dots. If you click on that, you'll see an option for rename. And you can rename um, uh, to put your name. And please also, if you would, put your ward number um, so we get a sense of who is in the, in the meeting tonight and uh, which wards you're representing. Once you do that, Take a moment in the chat, and this will just be some good practice for us to all use the chat and monitor the chat. Just type in a very brief response. It could be a sentence. Um, the, the question, what do you love most about your neighborhood in Tacoma Park? So we'll give everyone just a moment. If you have a question, please feel free to speak up or chat in, um, and we can, we can help you out. Just take a moment to update your Zoom screen. And then to chat in your response to the question, what do you love most about your neighborhood in Tacoma Park? Joe, I'm sorry to interrupt. I think we're we're trying to work on getting the inter the uh, Amharic interpreter into the Amharic channel. So if okay. you're trying to tune into that one, we are we're working on troubleshooting it. Okay. Should I pause or um, keep going? No, keep going. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. 
So we'll give everyone a moment to chat in your response to the question, what do you love most about your neighborhood in Tacoma Park? And to update your Zoom name to include the number of your ward. It looks like we have at least uh, a couple of folks who've put in their ward number. Thank you for that. And from our Tacoma Park team, if someone could actually chat in a link to the ward map, just for reference, that would be helpful as well for anyone who might wanna look at that map um, in answering this question or throughout the meeting tonight. And we see some, uh, thank you folks for, uh, for chiming in on the chat. We see, um, I like the festivals close to the community center. I love the sense of community in my neighborhood. Since I do a lot of walking, I appreciate the abundant tree canopy. Very nice. Love the people and that we are off the beaten path. How many different types of people live here? Wonderful. I love my access to the park and its serenity. Very nice. Thank you all for jumping into the, to the chat to share a little bit about your neighborhood. Um, and we're asking this question in part because uh, the, the meeting tonight is an opportunity um, not only to learn more about the redistricting process, but also for you all to share more about your community and your perspective on that community and, and what should be taken in consideration through the redistrict, redistricting process. So, so thank you for starting off um, on that note. Okay, so we'll move into um, some brief introductions. Um, first off, I'll introduce myself. My name is Joe Mormon. I am uh, representing Bloom Planning and I am the session facilitator for tonight. So I'll be walking us through the presentation and facilitating our discussion and our question and answer session. Uh, I'm joined tonight by Ben Maloney from Flow Analytics. He's a demographer and data analyst. Uh, ben will be um, providing some expertise and some insight related to um, the mapping tool that residents have access to and answering any qu questions related to the technical side of redistricting. And you also see on the screen, we have uh, four people from the city of Tacoma Park, Jesse Carpenter, the city clerk, uh, Rosalind Gr Grigsby, the community development manager, Dan Powers, Public Administration Specialist, and Donna Wright, Communications Manager. You can see them all in their respective Zoom boxes. Um, they have all been instrumental in preparing for this meeting and will be uh, playing an active role uh, tonight. So if you all could just wave so everyone can see you. Um, thank you so much for all your, uh, all your support and all your work in pulling this meeting together tonight. So those are some of the key folks that you'll see this evening. The goals for this session, so what do we hope to accomplish tonight? So the goal for tonight, uh, participants will do three things. One is to build knowledge. We want everyone to be able to understand what this redistricting is, why it matters, and how it works for Tacoma Park. Um, secondly, we want all participants to inform the redistricting process. So that will be about sharing the most important groups, spaces, and places that should be considered in this process. And then lastly, we want all participants to be able to share input following this meeting. Specifically, that means submitting a redistricting survey and or a sample map after the session. We're also hopeful that you will get other neighbors and residents involved in this process in some of the opportunities that are forthcoming to engage in redistricting. So that those are our goals for the evening. I wanted to share just a few norms for uh, for session engagement, and these are just agreements for um, for this conversation to ensure that we can all get the most out of the conversation. Um, and these are specific in some ways to our virtual meeting space here on Zoom. Uh, the first is respecting one another, our timeframes, and our shared airspace. We want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity, uh, an equal opportunity, to have their voices heard. And so we ask. Uh, we encourage everyone to speak up and to share, but to also make sure that there's space for everyone um, who is here to share as well. Secondly, stay in a learning and solution mindset, and remember that we're all in this together. Um, so this is a this is a process. There's a lot of learning happening, um, and so we encourage everyone to really really focus on that component. 
Thirdly, don't be afraid to say, sorry, I missed that. Or could someone clarify what we're doing? Um, we're going to cover a lot of information tonight, and uh, we encourage everyone to ask questions both through the chat and in one of our two question and answer blocks during the conversation. Fourth is allow for humanity. So we've got family, roommates, furry coworkers. We're all uh, in this meeting from home. Um, so just ask to give uh, each other grace um, as we are um, continuing to navigate a virtual space here on Zoom. And then lastly, is the notion of remembering that this is a process. Um, there may be more questions than answers. Um, nothing has been decided yet. Uh, and, and that's just important to keep in mind um, as, as part of this conversation here. So those are some norms uh, that the, the planning group um, would like to put forth to ensure that we can all get the most out of our session tonight. And finally, here's our agenda. We're tracking just a little bit behind, but I have no doubt we will be just fine. We're gonna, uh, we're starting off with our opening and introductions. Uh, we're gonna move shortly into a redistricting overview. Uh, we'll then uh, move into some participant input focused on communities of interest, as well as a review of the word map tool uh, that Ben from Flow Analytics will walk us through. There will be a, a Q&A with city officials and with Flow Analytics, and then we'll close out with some important next steps. We have until 9, uh, 9 p.m., um, so we'll see how the evening goes, but that's the plan uh, right there for our agenda. So moving into our redistricting overview, uh, before I do that, I want to pause to see if there are any questions, if anyone has any, um, if everyone's okay from a technology standpoint. If you have any questions, again, please uh, feel free to chat it in. Seems like we're good to go. All right, so I'm going to move into our redistricting overview. So the uh, first thing to acknowledge um, as we go into this section is that all of the participants in this meeting likely have different levels of experience and knowledge as it relates to redistricting. Maybe this is your fifth time going through this process and you have a lot of experience and knowledge. Um, maybe this is your first time learning about redistricting and you're here just to learn more and to engage. So we wanted to make sure there was time and space in this meeting to create common ground and common knowledge for everyone about what redistricting is, what the process is for Tacoma Park, um, and how you can engage going forward. So just keep that in mind over these next few slides that I'll share. So the first step is uh, redistrict redistricting overview at a really high level. What is redistricting? So every 10 years after the census, the city of Tacoma Park redraws the boundaries for city council wards. And these boundaries must be balanced in population in accordance with local and federal rules. So the question is, why is that so important? Well, it's important in part because they determine which voters vote for which council member. And changing those lines can change the identity, allegiance, and political priorities of a ward's council member. And we'll see in a moment the map showing the difference in population from 2010 to 2020 that helps to illustrate the importance of this process. So that's what redistricting is, and in a nutshell, why it's important. A little bit more about the process that Tacoma Park is following. So there's a timeline on your screen with multiple benchmarks and checkpoints. You can see tonight is the first of two community engagement meetings. Leading up to this meeting, uh, a few things have happened. City Council has met to adopt guidelines or criteria to help guide this process. Um, and the scenario modeler tool or the redistricting portal has also launched. And maybe some of you have actually been there to access the survey or to learn more information about the process. So you can see where we are tonight and what's still to come. Um, the next community engagement session will be on December 1st, and we'll share more about that at the end of our meeting, but you can kind of see the overall timeline um, with the goal of wrapping up uh, the process with the final decisions uh, coming in January at a meeting on January 19th. So there's the timeline for the process. And I wanna walk through the guidelines that are guiding the redistricting process. These are seven uh, really critical guidelines and we'll spend a little bit more time in each of these as we go through this section. Um, so I'm going to share just really briefly what they are right now, and then we'll take a mini dive into each of these going forward. 
So when we think about redistricting, uh, the first is that districts must be population balanced. The second is that they must be contiguous. We'll talk more about that definition in a moment. It must be done in compliance with all local, state, and federal laws, including the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Districts or wards should not favor or disfavor a protected class or political party. Districts should be as compact as possible. Districts should preserve the use of existing administrative and natural boundaries. And lastly, districts should preserve communities of interest if possible. And we'll talk more about communities of interest later on in our meeting. These are the seven core guidelines that are, that are guiding this process. And these seven guidelines are also really core to city council's resolution that was adopted officially at the end of September uh, to ensure that this process is done in a, in a fair and transparent manner. I wanted to share just a few additional pieces of information uh, from this, the city council resolution uh, that are in addition to those seven criteria. The first council uh, made clear that the difference between the largest and the smallest ward populations should not be more than 10%. And that's really focusing on this, this notion of having balanced populations among all six wards. Secondly, if practical, practicable, Considering other criteria, council has a goal of reducing the difference between the largest and smallest wards to 5% or less. So again, really focusing on that balanced population as a key goal. And then thirdly, uh, council called out very specifically that no war, ward shall be gerrymandered or changed to favor one political party or class to ensure the election or defeat of any incumbent candidate or potential candidate. And this is really just a very specific criteria that's building on uh, the criteria mentioned before about uh, federal, state, and local laws as it relates to elections and voting. So these are some specific criteria that were uh, that was adopted by council. That full resolution is available publicly if, if you would like to review it. Um, so I'm going to spend just a moment now um, diving into each of the seven guidelines just to make sure everyone has a deeper understanding of the criteria that's being followed for the process. And we're going to do some of these in a bit more of an interactive manner, it's, so it's not just me telling you. Uh, for this first one, uh, districts must be population balanced. The map that you see on the screen, maybe you have seen it in uh, the redistricting portal if you've visited that website. But this shows the difference in population and by census block from 2010 to 2020, over 10 years from one census to the next. And you can see that the dark blue and the light blue represent places where uh, population has decreased since 2010. You can see in the yellow, the light orange and the dark orange areas where population has increased since 2010. And so with those changes in population, again, that, that changes the overall population of each of the existing wards. So one of the main goals, one of the main guidelines guiding this process is to ensure that all these districts, all of these wards can be population balanced. So that's the first guideline, just to illustrate what, what is meant by uh, population balance. Secondly, this is one where I'm gonna ask you all to uh, chime in in the chat. The second guideline is that districts must be contiguous, which means sharing a common border. So based on that definition, which of these two districts on the screen, these imaginary districts, um, is contiguous? You can chat in your answer. Is it number one or is it number two? I'll give a moment for everyone to chat in. All right, we're seeing uh, seeing some twos coming in. See four twos. Any other votes? Any other chats coming in? All right, and the correct answer is two. Everyone uh, got that one right. So contiguous, again, means sharing a common border, uh, which is different from option one, where part of the ward is in one area and then it's separated into another area. Um, so part of this guideline really is ensuring that there are no islands um, that are within, uh, within the city, uh, so to speak. 
um, except of course for real islands, which should be connected by bridges, tunnels, or ferries. And I don't think that is a, an issue in Tacoma Park. So that's the second guideline. The third, really kind of third and fourth go together here. Um, the third is this idea that uh, redistricting must be in compliance with all uh, local, state, and federal laws. And fourth, that districts should not favor or disfavor a protected class or political party. So we'll look at two illustrations to kind of to bring this to life. And this is another one for, for you all to chime in uh, and to share via the chat. Um, the question is, which of the two scenarios, A or B, is fair to all voters? So take a moment to look at those two diagrams in A. Uh, first off, the majority group is represented by the, the gray circles. The minority group is represented by the turquoise or aqua blue circles. In option A, the majority group is 75% of the population and makes up a majority of 75 districts, 75% 75 of districts. The minority group is 25% of the population and makes up the majority in 25% of the districts. In B, the majority group makes up the majority in 100% of the districts and minority group, which is 25% of the population makes up the majority in 0% of the districts. Which of the two is fair to all voters, A or B? We see April chatted in A, we've got uh, Arthur A, yep, uh, Karen A, we've got a few A's up here. All right, and of course, the, um, the fair option for voters is option A. And I'm actually gonna invite uh, my colleague, Ben Maloney from Flow Analytics to share just a little bit more about this slide. Yeah, yeah. actually, Joe said it really, really well. Um, probably just about exactly how I would do it. What we're actively trying to do is avoid what's happening uh, in, in the B scenario where we have that vote dilution that's happening where that minority group is effectively silenced um, by the way that the districts are cut up. So we're trying to pay attention to the 14th Amendment that prohibits the use of race and ethnicity to, to draw these boundaries. But at the same time, we do have to pay attention to the Voting Rights Act also. So we walk this fine line when making these decisions, but at in the entire time, trying to avoid what's happening in the scenario B. All right, thank you, Ben. So that takes us through um, four of the seven guidelines. Our fifth one is that districts should be as compact as possible. We see two different uh, districts here on the screen, uh, the one on the left and one on the right. Um, we can see the one on the left is not compact. It's sort of uh, covers a lot of ground. Um, it's unnecessarily thin or serpentine is the term. Um, and the one on the right is compact and together. So whenever possible, uh, districts should always be drawn in that manner. Six, uh, districts should preserve the use of existing administrative and natural boundaries. So very specifically, that means major streets and roads, rivers, lakes, and mountains, and lines that are already used as boundaries uh, in um, a particular uh, municipality. Um, so you might think about the, the existing map in, in Tacoma Park and some of the key roads and streets and natural um, boundaries that exist that divide those, those wards currently. Um, part of the guidelines for this process is to ensure that those existing boundaries are preserved um, in the next version of the ward map. And then lastly, is the notion of preserving communities of interest or other, otherwise known as COIs. So there's a definition on the screen here. A community of interest is a population that shares common social and economic interests that should be included within a single district for purposes of its effective and fair representation. Um, a community of interest has common needs and interests that are reflected in patterns of geography, social interaction, trade, and common interests. So what does that really mean? Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, this process and part of the, the purpose of this meeting tonight is to ensure that really the human side and the community side um, of this process is represented. Uh, communities of interest include things like homeowners associations, schools or school districts, local businesses, uh, defined neighborhoods, uh, places of worship, parks, and other community spaces. Um, so these are specific parts of a community that 
um, should potentially be all part of, uh, of one ward. Um, this is the part of the process where excellent data analytics and technology can't always capture. And so it's really important for, um, for residents to be able to share which communities of interest are most important to consider in this process as the new maps are being drawn. And so that's where we're gonna actually gonna go next in our conversation where we're gonna open this up to conversation, discussion, and sharing uh, from, from uh, the participants in this meeting to hear from you about the communities of interest to take into consideration in this process. So that was a lot of information. I'm gonna pause here. Uh, to see what questions you have about the Tacoma Park redistricting guidelines, the seven guidelines that I just re uh, reviewed, um, or the definition of communities of interest. So this would be a time to, um, you can raise your hand, uh, you can chat in your, uh, your question, and we'll take some time to address those questions right now. I must have done a really good job of explaining those guidelines. <laughs> OK, if you do have questions, there is another question and answer portion of the session that will come just a little bit later um, where uh, I know uh, folks are, are eager to answer any questions that come to the table tonight. So I will go ahead and move us on to the next part, um, but please feel free to chat in your questions if you think of them between now and our next Q&A. All right. So. Um, we're gonna move into the next part of our session. This is the participant uh, input uh, part of the session. So we're gonna encourage everyone to uh, jump in and share about the communities of interest that matter most to you in Tacoma Park. So to do that, uh, I want everyone to take a moment to imagine the parts of your community in Tacoma Park that make it what it is. What are those communities of interest that you feel should be included in the same council ward? And we're going to give you an opportunity to share those communities of interest with your neighbors and city officials. Um, so the floor is open um, for anyone to, to jump in and share on this on this notion of communities of interest. Joe, you also have a question in the chat. Thank you. Oh, Karen, thank you for your question. So the question is, um, and we'll pause on this discussion for one moment, since the natural boundaries don't change as the population changes, how can you redistrict Tacoma Park? Would, uh, would a Tacoma Park team member or perhaps Ben like to respond to that question? Yeah, I could speak to it a little bit. Um, the boundaries, I mean, yeah, of course, won't be changing. Uh, they're more used as maybe almost as a, a bumper guide of sorts to to help guide the shape of some of the, redistrict, the redistricting that will be happening. But uh, it's all primarily focused on population and how population has changed over the past 10 years. So if one board has taken or district has taken over on too much population that has to change somewhat, um, but at the same time paying attention to those natural boundaries where possible, depending on the shape of, of the community or the municipality or county or something like that, um, that'll inhibit that ability somewhat or enhance it, um, uh, just given whatever the, whatever's happening with the community itself. So. It's not a hard rule, uh, but it is something to pay attention to. Thanks, Ben. Are there any other questions? Karen, thank you for, uh, there's a follow-up question. How do uh, districts affect our everyday lives? I can, I can uh, respond in, uh, in part just in the fact that the districts determine 
uh, which voters vote for which council member. So the person who is representing you on city council is representing your ward. And so when we talk about communities of interest, all these different parts of your community, um, which, which ward those um, elements of your community fit into makes a big difference in terms of who is representing you. So that's one major um, way that it affects your, your everyday life. Ben, would you add anything or any of the folks from Tacoma Park? Um, I don't have anything to add myself. I think that pretty well covers it. Thanks for the question. Jesse. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to add that, I mean, really, in an ideal world, it won't, it shouldn't make any difference. All wards, you know, should get the same services. We'd like to think um, to, to head towards having all wards have the same ability to get to a park or same ability to get to the community center or it, it really shouldn't have an impact on um, your everyday life, but really the only difference it makes is where is what ward council member you vote for. So I don't know if anyone else has anything to add, but that would be my thought about that. Thanks, Jesse. And thank you, Karen, for your questions. Any other questions? All right, so I'll, I wanna encourage everyone to, um, uh, for our participants to use this opportunity to, to share your thoughts on communities of interest in Tacoma Park. Are there any communities of interest in your current ward that would be really important for the folks who are drawing the maps to take into consideration? Um, again, this is, a, this is a really critical part of the process to ensure that uh, the, the community side, the human side of this process is, is taken um, into account in a way that um, technology and data can't always. So are there specific neighborhoods? Uh, are there specific um, you know, schools or, or um, other community, um, community components that should be taken into consideration? And feel free to chat in or to um, take yourself off mute. We have a small enough group, we can just do that. And we'd love to hear from folks. Well, we have two elementary schools. Yeah. I'm sorry, who, was, uh, who just spoke? Sorry, I'm on my phone. We have um, two elementary schools. We have uh, Tacoma Park Elementary and Silver Spring. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Rolling Terrace. And that is sort of a, I don't know, an unofficial bifurcation. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Um, and then, and then uh, I would say maybe Piney Branch Elementary School. It's also sort of a, a natural boundary. Um, but I don't know if there's boundaries like you're thinking of, like HOAs or something like that. All our neighborhoods have names um, and we they're sort of driven by our list serves. Like uh, between the creeks is, is sort of the top of Ward 5. That's the middle finger part of uh, Tacoma Park, the, the peninsula um, or uh, the, the the Penn neighborhood, we all have those names, but I don't know if we align them with our wards per se. Got it, thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, I do see a hand up um, from our participants. Ma'am, would you like to, to come off mute and, and share your perspective? Is that my hand or somebody else's? That is your hand. I'm sorry, I don't see your name on the screen. So yeah, you're the sorry. only hand right now. I'm sorry, I'm asking so many questions, but I have, you know, I'm new at this whole idea. That, and I am an elementary school teacher. So I was wondering how that, how, how does that work? Do you ever split an elementary school area? I work at Rolling Terrace. 
Um, does it ever happen that half of the community might be represented by um, what one council person and the, another half by another? And like, just how does that work? Does it ever happen? So Karen, this is Jesse. And um, I can answer that. I mean, right now with, with of course, with Piney Branch. So don't forget, we're talking about city council, Tacoma Park city wards. So most of the wards um, attend uh, Piney Branch Elementary School and Tacoma Park Elementary School. But as AJ pointed out, we have some residents attend, some children attend Rolling Terrace as well. So multiple uh, council members, multiple wards are represented in Piney Branch Elementary School, whereas in Rolling Terrace, it's really just part of one ward as, as um, AJ pointed out. Oh, and you should tell them about the middle school and the high school too. Well, why don't you do that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so almost all of our students um, will, I mean, if they're, if they're choosing to go to a high school inbounds, meaning like they're not going to a specialty high school or, uh, uh, or, or some other program like theater or science, will attend Blair, um, which is Blair High School. That's at Colesville Road. I think that's 51 University off the top of my head. Um, and that's at Colesville and University. And then the middle school is pretty much all the schools feed to Tacoma Park Middle School on da, 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 Piney Branch near Philadelphia, or near-ish to Philadelphia. Right. And the, and the thing to remember is the city of Tacoma Park has no control, no direct control over the schools. So the schools are a county function. So really it doesn't make a lot of difference except in terms of um, who your neighbors are but it really doesn't make any difference in terms of what city council member represents you because we we don't have control over the schools thank you um, we have a, a comment in the in the chat from april um, it says my community of interest would be to promote my condominium's property value, or is it clear that our neighbors share the same goal? Um, Paper, would you would you like to share any more with the group? You don't have to, but I want to invite you to share if you'd like. Okay, I unmuted. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, um, when I took I took the survey and I was asked the same question. And that's really hard for me. And this is the, on, the only community of interest I could come up with is that I'm in a condominium. And the one common goal that we all share is well, the owners, not necessarily the renters, but the owners all have an interest in keeping the property values raised. And uh, some of the other people on our street, it's not clear that they care about their property values, much less ours. Um, because of garbage strewn all over and uh, cars being worked on on the sidewalk and that kind of thing. Um, so that's the only that's the only example I can come up with. And I, I, I think it's valid, but I'm not sure. So I would leave it to you to tell me whether that's a legitimate community of interest, if that's a good scenario. Well, I would share that the it, it's likely important that your uh, homeowners association is all included in one ward and that it's not divided between different wards because you would want to have one individual council member likely representing you um so that's one that's one way to think about it in terms of your uh, condo association i invite anyone else to jump in if you have a comment on that um but thank you for for sharing um, I see that Arthur chatted in a map of Montgomery County Elementary School District attendance boundaries. Thank you for that. Um, and I see a comment from uh, from Christopher. Uh, districts decided by watersheds. Um, thank you for that. Is there, would you, Christopher, would you like to comment uh, on what you put in the chat?
no obligation. Thank you for uh, thank you for sharing. All right, thank you. It might be interesting if you look at just Ward Five, which is my ward. That's the the top part of the ward, the peninsula part. Um, it is so radically different. There are million dollar homes and then subsidized housing all within the same ward. Um, it's one of the most compact of the wards. And I think the population was sitting at 2,700 off the top of my head. So one of the, the least populated wards. Um, it's just, there's there's condos, there there's a good large size condo communities, subsidized housing, and then, you know, super homes. It's incredibly diverse, all within a couple of blocks. Lots of different uh, communities of interest present in just in one ward, it sounds like. Yes, absolutely. And it's been that way for a long time. Thank you. Do we have others who'd like to share um, about specific communities of interest that are particularly important to consider in the redistricting process. All right. Do we have any other um, any other comments, uh, folks from Tacoma, uh, City of Tacoma Park? Anything that you'd like to add? Um, or Ben, before I turn it over to you, anything you'd like to add about this notion of communities of interest, given your experience with redistricting? Um, nothing especially, other than your, your communities of interest. Like if you were to uh, fall and divide what we, it is that we're, we're trying to achieve here into shoulds and coulds, like our shoulds are definitely our, our population criteria, maintaining a contiguous boundary and trying to avoid uh, gerrymandering. Everything else would probably fall into a could. That doesn't mean that we ignore it. This is a fairly laborious process and we're, we're taking all of this public comment seriously. And anyone who's submitting anything about uh, communities of interest are things that we do like to consider. Um, it's not that we, we're, we're going to actively try to pay attention to those and keep um, say like, uh, like school districts or something or an elementary boundary within a particular ward where we can. Um, but it's not always possible uh, given the other criteria that have to be met. So we do, yeah, welcome all input for all communities of interest. It is all very, very valuable. All right, thanks, Ben. Um, I think I'm gonna turn it over to you. Uh, so, so Ben is going to walk us through um, some of the uh, other opportunities that all residents of Tacoma Park have to further engage in this process. Uh, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and invite Ben to share his. So, uh, and it sounds like a, some folks have actually had an opportunity to take the redistricting survey and you've been on the redistricting portal already. Um, so this will be an opportunity to learn more about some of the features there and how in particular to use the mapping tool. So Ben, you can go ahead and share your screen. Yeah, it looks like uh, I need permission. Looks like you were just made a co-host. You should be good now. Excellent. All right. Um, so this is the uh, city of Tacoma Park uh, redistricting site for uh, setting up uh, just about everything I just talked about for um, submitting your communities of interest, questions, comments, and then ultimately the mapping tool. So there are a few different ways if you haven't already been to the site to get in touch and submit your opinions. There's of course the public meetings with another one coming up uh, at the beginning of December. Uh, we have the redistricting survey um, that I'll just take a quick look at if you haven't already in just a bit. Um, you can also submit other comments and questions via another comment form. Um, also real quick to circle back around to the redistricting survey, you could fill it out here or you can get a paper copy at the Library Community Center or at the Tacoma Park Recreation Center. 
And then our big one is uh, create and submit proposed ward maps. Um, I'll save that for last. Uh, there is an interactive mapping tool um, that will allow you to create your own wards um, and try to get that, that, uh, that total deviation down underneath say 10% or even lower than 5%. Um, I've played around with it a little bit for this area. Um, it is, is fairly difficult to get it underneath 5%. I would probably, I got it down as 5.2%. If you can beat that, let me know. I would love to see it. Um, so uh, start with the take the redistricting survey. Uh, if you click that link there, it'll take you to uh, the form where you'll fill out your name, your address, the ward you live in, um, and the uh, race or ethnicity if, uh, eth information if you would like to. Um, a little bit about do you own or rent your current residence and then name of community and then uh, community description. You also have an opportunity here to draw a community of interest that you don't want to type out street by street directions, which can uh, also be a fairly laborious process. Uh, you would click this little tool up here, click into the map and then double click to draw your community of interest. So if, if you do have a geographic extent in mind, um, you would go through this process and hit submit, and then that would make its way to us and then enter our into our consideration as a community of interest or something to pay attention to as these words are being redrawn. Uh, your next is the redistricting survey. Uh, this is where you enter again, uh, your name, your address, the ward, Wait, did I just go through this? I just did this already. Public comment, sorry. <laughs> All right, the redistricting comments. Uh, no mapping tool available here, but you'll enter your name, your email address, uh, residential or business address, and then select one of these options uh, before entering in your question or comment here. Once you hit submit, it will also make its way back to us and it's something that we can address uh, probably on the FAQ page or something along those lines. A few other little bits of information, population data and maps, uh, they are available on that PowerPoint uh, that, was, uh, that we've already gone through uh, towards the beginning of this presentation, but you can also take a look here, see some of the data tables, how things have changed from uh, say 20, uh, the 2013 redistricting process uh, into uh, the current scenario. This explains a little bit about what you're going to see when I bring up the map. The wards on our redistricting tool do not quite match up um, with what is, uh, the ward map looks like presently. Um, that's because at the time of the 2013 uh, redistricting process, uh, the blocks were split and we can't do that for this process. So what we ended up doing was taking say the centroid of a census block and attributing that to the closest ward. So they're gonna look a little weird when you initially bring them up that's okay, you're going to be remaking them anyway. Uh, we also have the population change map that we've already taken a look at. And then the census 2020 population map. So the census block populations uh, throughout the city of Tacoma Park. So quite a lot happening over in this census block here with about a thousand people, um, 940 people within this census block and then 736 there. So these are all, um, ones that if you were to move these, it would create quite a shift in the deviation um, or population of each of the wards. Ben, can I interrupt for a minute? This is Jesse. Mm -hmm. Would you just take just a moment to tell people what a census block is? Yeah, census blocks are... Maybe just, pull uh, up that other map again. Yeah, definitely. Oh. One. That one, um, just yeah. the, the, the smallest unit of geography that this U.S. Census uses for enumeration purposes, so population counts and races and ethnicity and so on and so forth. That's the tiniest unit um, that they offer that we can actually get data for, and then everything else uh, that the U.S. Census uh, uses is built upon that. So the census uh, block groups are the next level up, and then census tracts that we probably hear more and more about are the next larger unit, and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, that is uh, essentially it for a census block. But we don't often see them, but because they're our tiniest unit, um, they make it easy to kind of aggregate together and uh, make bigger things out of.
All right, and then finally, our last tool is our district scenario modeler. I'm gonna scroll to this real quick. And this is what I'm talking about where uh, the, the configuration of the wards here don't quite match up with what the wards look like on maps that you're looking at right now. But again, that's, that's okay um, because you're gonna be shifting these over um, from one ward to another. Uh, so each of these oops, zoomed in, which I shouldn't have done. There we go. Um, each of these colors uh, correspond to the ward. Uh, so ward one is in this orangish color, ward two, light blue, uh, three is in this green, yellow for four, five is uh, that darker blue and the deeper orange or rust orange is in ward six. I won't go into too much detail as to how to actually manipulate these things. Uh, we do have three different options that will walk you through the process. There's the demo video, uh, the user guide, and then technical support. If you do have any questions, I suspect there will be questions because this probably isn't the easiest thing to just jump into and start using. Um, so definitely feel free to take advantage of the technical support. And then one of us, probably me, will be uh, getting back in touch with you um, as to how to do this. But um, so just real quick, this is, a, this is a dynamic tool, not a static tool. So what changes you make will be reflected immediately uh, within your selection detail. Uh, so if I were to use this select tool that you'll find out about in some of the, the user guides up here, let's say I just wanna select these three blocks. This shifts uh, to represent what, who lives within those three areas. So 383 people uh, live within this particular area. Um, we want to say this area here, we're looking at about 800 people in that area. Um, right now you're starting off at 77.4% total deviation. This is the number that we're looking at when we want it. So we want this underneath 10% or even underneath 5% if possible. This isn't actually the total deviation. This is again, just due to the, the way that the wards are configured into blocks now. So your actual, if we were to, we're able to put the, uh, the current configuration of the wards into this map and ignore blocks entirely, it would be closer to, I think, around 8% or something along those lines, um, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, so we're still we're trying to get under, keep it underneath 10% if possible, underneath 5%. And that is it. Any questions about this process before we move on to the next step? Thanks, Ben. That's a, a lot of information, lots of great opportunities for everyone to uh, to engage in many different ways in this process. Um, I do want to pause here to see uh, what questions folks have about those opportunities to engage. And I want to note also uh, for the conversation we just had about communities of interest, I think it was noted by one participant that uh, there's almost an identical question in the redistricting survey. And that's very intentional because we want to make sure that there are multiple opportunities for all residents to be able to share um, their perspective on communities of interest. And so those all those uh, perspectives can be taken into consideration for the maps that are ultimately drawn uh, to for consideration by city council. Um, so these opportunities to engage more deeply beyond this meeting are really, really important. Um, so want to make sure that there's an opportunity now for folks to ask any questions that you might have about any of the information that, uh, that Ben just shared um, about the redistricting portal. If you have questions about how to access it, um, any of that we'd like to make sure we can address right now. And we've got uh, we've got a hand raised. Uh, is that Karen? I believe. I see your hand. April. I'm sorry, April. Hi, April. Hi. Um, I am wondering if you do a serious uh, job of it. About how long does it take to 
remap uh, Tacoma Park um, in terms of getting the uh, population difference below 5%? Uh, when I was playing around with it, I was I probably spent a solid hour trying to get that underneath that 5.2%. But then that is just me paying attention only to the numbers. Um, everyone else that's involved with this, like members of the public like you, um, you have a finer knowledge of, of what's happening over there and what uh, uh, neighborhoods and whatnot in particular. Um, so it might take a little bit longer because you have more things to consider other than just strictly numbers. Okay, that's good. Thank you. And we have another hand. Um, thank you, April. Um, Arthur. Uh, yes, I'm wondering if it's possible to see the maps that other people have submitted. That I'm unsure about if uh, we have that set up or not. That's something we could probably circle back around to once that gets figured out. But yeah, that would be handy. And uh, one other thing, I think it would be useful if the mapping tool sent the confirmation electronic mail to folks who submitted maps, uh, indicating that the map had been received. If it doesn't already, uh, that's something that we can look into. Uh, there is a save draft and then a submit your map. Um, yeah, that's something to check into. I like that idea. Thank you. Um, I wonder if, if uh... Jesse, do you happen to know if the maps are shared publicly? I don't know if we talked about that previously. I don't want to. I, you know, honestly, I can't think of any reason why we wouldn't do that. Um, honestly, if, if someone can give me a reason not to, please do. But I, I think um, looking at as many options as we can will be um, enlightening, I would imagine. Okay, so two, at least two next steps there from that question. One is to confirm that submitted maps could be shared uh, for other residents to review. Um, and then to confirm that folks who submit maps get an email confirmation to know that it was received. Um, so I think that those have been taken note of there. Thank you for that question, mm -hmm. Arthur. And, and I would think, um, this is Jesse again, I would think that um, we could, if we could have a way, you know, to, we don't need to identify who submitted the map. I mean, maybe they could just be numbered or something like that. So we could talk about yeah. that. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great point. Other questions? Um, and these questions can be about the, uh, the redistricting tools that Ben just reviewed, or they could be other questions you have about the redistricting process in general. This is a opportunity to ask any question you have on your mind. Any questions out there? So I, this is Jesse. I have a question. Um, so we have the map, the census block 2020 map up. Is it possible to post the 2010 block map? Yeah, that data uh, we can still pull and, and then create a map and have that posted. Yeah, I think that would be really interesting to be for people to be able to see that as well. Great, thanks for that, Jesse. Any other questions uh, from folks in the meeting? This isn't so much a question, but um, in ward in ward six, we had a in twenty ten. Jesse, back me up on this one. 2010, I think the Tacoma Overlook was going under renovation and so it was empty. Correct. Yeah, and that was one of the confounding, that's why word six looks kind of, I don't know, larger than it would normally be um, geographically. And I wonder what's that gonna, what that's going to look like now that we are gonna redistrict. And this won't occur for this census, but 
by next census or sometime between now and this and the next census, we're gonna be adding an entirely new neighborhood to Tacoma Park. Are we? Yeah, at the Adventist. I mean, oh, presuming they're actually gonna break maybe. down. Yeah. Break down. <laughs> presuming, you know, they're, talk they're still talking about it. it looks closer than not, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's possible that someone who's um, lived here a long time could tell us, but I, as I understand it, the that side of um, the part of Ward 6 that is in uh, across New Hampshire Avenue has been both in Ward 2 and Ward 6 uh, from time to time, depending on the population. So someone else could tell me if that's true, but it, it definitely, flipped um, in 2013 from Ward 2 to Ward 6. I'm sure Arthur knows. That's right. Yeah. And also Essex House on Piney Branch, that flipped into Ward 5, right? At the last um, census? Yes, to add one. population. Yes. There's this one little carve out in on, uh, sorry, Maple Avenue near Sligo Creek with one apartment building that's in Ward 5. Um, that's not, uh, that, that just sort of is hanging out there. It's sort of like, um, there's nothing else around it in Ward 5, just the building. Yeah. So I hope people take advantage of the opportunity to use the mapping tool and, and learn about it and try different scenarios. I think it will be a really educational process for anyone who works on it. Thanks, Jesse. I want a, one last opportunity for anyone who would like to um, ask a question. I would like to ask a question. I admit I'm still having trouble getting the basic map functions to work. Um, so I had asked where the block, the existing block map is and where the existing districts map are, is and some of the other maps you just showed. And the link you put in the chat for me doesn't work. And so um, I'm wondering if I'm the only one who doesn't understand this. Maybe not. So I'm looking at the map that's on the web page that says District Scenario Modeler. And there's a map you can play with. And there's the percentages that you've talked about, 77.4% deviation, et cetera. So how do we show ourselves the existing blocks? the existing districts, uh, wards, um, et cetera. Um, you said something about it being under the comment block, but I don't see a comment block. So a little confused. Um, are you able to, to see the, the colors on the map? Not at the moment. It's gone blank on me color-wise until I put my cursor on a part of the map. Mm, okay, can you just click, uh, do you see where it says Hampshire, uh, Hampshire Knowles on the map? Sorry. Um, yes. Okay. Hampshire Knowles. Yeah, just cl yeah click all right, there. so there's the colors. That's the existing wards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a little uh, a little finicky sometimes if you hover your mouse over, say, any of those circles oh. uh, that you see that as you know, Ward One, Ward Two, Ward Three, and so on with the population numbers. Um, it'll just highlight that, uh, and occasionally it won't let it go. Uh, and I'm not so sure those, why. Yeah. so those are the blocks, the existing yep. blocks from 2020. Mm -hmm. and where was that green white map that you showed before? Oh. That is back one page on uh, the actual redistricting 2021 uh, page. And then if you can get back there, you'll scroll down to the bottom uh, where it says population data and maps. So it won't be on that map page. 
Ben, would you like to share your screen? Actually, that would probably, yeah, that would be better. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, this one here. All right, there we go. So if you go to this page here that brought you to right. that map okay. tool, mm -hmm. and then population data and maps, where it says data tables, population change map, and then the census 2020 population maps, those will bring up the, the tables or, or maps that I have shown off. So it's like the census 2020 population map. Click that. Oh, down here in the orange. Okay, I see. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure thing. Any other questions or? All right. Any other questions? Appreciate all the questions that folks have been sharing. One last call here. Joe or Jesse, could you please give a time frame by which you're hoping people will give you input or draw maps and submit? I believe that the um, the map uh, tool, if I'm remembering the timeline correctly, is open until the second week of December. Uh, Jesse, can you confirm the date by chance on the timeline? I'm sorry, that sounds about right, but um, I am sorry to say I don't have that. We could find out and we will make that information uh, very apparent, uh, but I don't, I don't have that date in front so, of me. I think uh, December 10th is the date. I'm looking at the timeline I shared earlier. So the preliminary options, uh, this is this is useful for kind of closing oh, yeah. up the meeting so folks can see what's coming next. Uh, there will, will be a council meeting on uh, November 10th where council will review preliminary map options. Um, so that, of course, that's a public meeting. It's an opportunity to see um, what options are being considered. Um, and the next community engagement meeting, I will share this, the specific dates and information in just a moment is on December 1st. Um, and that meeting will be an opportunity for um, all residents to review and to weigh in on and discuss the map options um, for that uh, come out of that council meeting. The, you'll notice on December 10th, the scenario model, modeler tool closes. So that's the, the last time that you could submit um, a map. Um, and I'm seeing from Donna that the community engagement meeting is actually December 2nd at 6.30. So I think that information needs to be updated on this timeline. I apologize for that. Um, but we'll, we'll review that date in just a moment. So that's the time frame. So you have uh, about six weeks to, uh, to submit those maps. Any other questions? So on that note, um, just review, um, and the information is correct on this slide, the community engagement session, uh, the second one is in fact on Thursday, December 2nd, but these are two important upcoming meetings. Um, and I wanna encourage everyone uh, to do, to do uh, two things, certainly for you to, uh, if you haven't, submit the community, uh, to submit the redistricting survey through the portal, to uh, submit a map, um, to uh, continue to educate yourself and, and, and stay engaged in the process, um, to attend the, the council meeting that's coming up on November 10th, um, and certainly the community engagement session that's coming up on December 2nd. Um, but equally as important is to encourage other residents, other neighbors, um, folks you know in the city to get involved in this process. The more, uh, the more community input, the better. Um, so whether that's encouraging someone to complete the redistricting survey uh, or to submit a map or uh, to invite someone to join you to, uh, for the next meeting, um, we certainly encourage everyone to get folks involved in this process as much as possible. So again, you see the two upcoming meetings here, um, Wednesday, November 10th, 7.30 p.m. will be held virtually via Zoom again 
Um, that meeting will focus on reviewing preliminary map options. It's also an opportunity, of course, for public comment. And then the, the second community engagement session uh, will be held on Thursday, December 2nd at 630 to 830, held virtually via Zoom. Um, I'll be facilitating that conversation that, uh, that night as well. And that meeting will focus on reviewing and sharing feedback on sample maps prior to the final council decision. So tonight was really about uh, sharing information, ensuring that everyone has the information they need to engage in this process and knows how to engage in the process. Um, certainly to, to share your feedback and your thoughts as it relates to communities of interest. The next meeting will really focus on the specific maps that are being considered, that are taking into consideration all the feedback that's, that's coming in uh, from residents for sure. So those are the upcoming meetings. Are there any questions about those? Um, so I have a question, and that is, do you know, or Ben, do you know, when will we have the, the first draft maps uh, before that meeting on November 10th to publish? So we would be publishing them on our website. Do you, do you know? Um, I don't know the exact date. Usually we've been trying uh, to have at least two days, um, but we can work that out with you to see what works best. Right, because it is, it's going to come quickly. Mm -hmm. And and I don't and so that'll be um, we'll, we'll want because although people will be able to comment, our public comment period is at the beginning of the meeting. It's not at the end of the meeting, so people will be able to comment on what they see on the website, and then the presentation itself of the maps will be later in the evening. So I just wanted to point that out. But as soon as we have them, we will post them on our website, but they won't be available. It, it, they won't be available a week before, I don't think. So uh, do watch for that. And, um, and those will be very, I would assume very preliminary. That's just, that's a first draft. Thanks, Jesse. I see we have a hand raise, is that April? Yes. Um, who, what? From whom will these maps, these map samples be coming? Is it, is it, uh, is the process restrained to just fellow citizens?